I'm going to talk through a couple of practical problems that feature some really deceptive tactics. Seeing these problems and tactics and taking the time to study them will improve your vision. And that's the key with all problems, to understand the theme of them and how to recognize similar patterns and positions. Now, the two problems I'm going to share are not easy whatsoever. In fact, if you can see the solution to them both, you are an expert level or even a master level player. But I think all players can take something from these problems. So if you're a beginner or just learning, it may open your eyes to more possibilities within this great game. World champion Alex Moisey have analyzed this first problem. The parameters are white to move and win. We can see there are seven pieces on each side of the board. And what I recommend is actually pausing this video and maybe setting up this problem on your own board and try working it out. I'm going to play through how we even got to this position in the first place and then pause once again and go through the solution with you all. So how did we get into this position in the first place? Well, let's set the board up from the start so we can go through it in full. The opening is 914, 2419, and 1116. White attacks the center with 2218. And red can play the 5 9, but it's a bit of an uphill game for red. Although a lot of players do like this, including myself, but again, it's more of an uphill climb with 811 allowing the capture probably being best. White attacks with 2622, followed by 1115 and 2218 next. Alex Moisev in his analysis said this capture of 2819 first is best and I think he's absolutely correct. Now coming toward the center of the board. Threatening a two for one here. The white stops that. Now making an inroad into the single corner. Allowing the piece to go on to 22. Now 610 will draw here, followed by 2724, but 710. We'll lose, and now we are at the problem. The way white wins here is incredibly deceptive and very hidden. And it's with this unnatural 30-26 move. Now, many of you are probably saying, why? How is that even possible? Red has a clear cut into the king row now. And that is true. However, if red does that, if it goes in to get a king right away, white can just go 26-22, and it's going to go 22-18 next, unless something is done about this position, because if it goes 22-18 next, you can see just a 2 for 1. Red obviously can't go 11-15 because you have this 2 for 1 as well. So if it tries to shore anything up here, again, if it just actually gets a king now, 22-18 is going to happen and the game is over. So if it tries to go something like 6-9 or 5-9, white is just going to make this star move, 23-18. And now 18-14, with this piece being trapped and what will be a piece up and will win the game. So that's why going for the immediate king is 
a good way at all to go here. So let's go back to this position. Okay, so once again after the star, key move to win 3026. Let's say instead of just going for the king and allowing the winning 2622, what about something like 5-9 or 6-9? So if 5-9 is played, this is where this incredibly deceptive tactic comes into play. The key move is this 1915 for white. If the jump of 1118 is played, there is a 2 for 1. So we don't want that. So instead, we'll take the 1019 capture. What now? Maybe some of you can see this at this point. This is what I like to call a single corner Brooklyn. Most Brooklyn tactics are formed on the double corner side and, and is instrumental in the early formations taking place on in the double corner. But here it takes place from the single corner. Seventeen fourteen next. Must jump. And now taking this capture. And then we have the triple jump with white being piece ahead and will win the game. Incredibly, incredibly deceptive. And if you were to able to see that, my congratulations to you. The same works if 6-9 is played instead of the 5-9, and I will show exactly how that will work as well. If 6-9 is played instead, again, it's the same result as if 5-9 was played. So we have the 1915. Again, this jump of 1118 cannot happen because of the 2 for 1. So the 1019 jump instead. Followed by 1714 again. And now we have the Brooklyn tactic being deployed. So, brilliant analysis by Alex Moiseev. And it just goes to show you that. Any move on the board in checkers can potentially be a game-winning move. Even that incredibly odd-looking and strange-looking 30-26 to win this game. At the recent North Carolina State Checkers Tournament, Tim Lafferty shared a position very similar to this. And immediately I recognized what must be done here because I've seen a similar theme to this before. And here we are to this exact position. This position comes from the 1965 World Championship between Walter Hellman and Derek Oldbury, with Walter Hellman having the white pieces and Oldbury having the red pieces. The parameters here are red or black to move and draw. And it's very difficult to see, and you can see red is really in dire straits here. The pieces on the board are even, but red is severely restricted in this area of the board and really only has one viable move that it can play but even with this move it just looks untenable so once again I would pause here and set up this position on your own board and see if you can figure out how to draw in this position for red once again I'm going to set up the board so that you can, we can actually walk through this game on how it actually played out. And this is from game six of that 1965 World Championship, if any of you would like to reference it. The opening they balloted, 9-13, 24-19, and 6-9. Probably not many of you would see this in online play, but it is a good three-move ballot. So 
very standard play. I won't go into the specifics of just analyzing this opening as a whole, but very standard play here throughout. Logical moves, I'm sure many of you are noticing. Now this move that Oldbury played will actually lose this losing 6-9 instead. 13-17 is the draw here, but 6-9 was played. 13-17 is one move too late. Walter pitches. Takes the 2 for 2. And now here we are in this position. Now, Walter had just played 24-19, and, and Derek Oldberry in the notes, in the annotations, said that they were both moving pretty quickly at this point. Instead of this 24-19, which allows the draw, 24-20 will instead win, because now if 6-10 is played, 23-19 can be played, and there's literally nowhere for red to go. But with this 24-19 being played, now the draw can happen. And what red does here is it does go 6-10. 6-9 is not possible with this 23-18. And then it goes in to get a king. Now, again, red looks to be in dire straits here. But it executes a deceptive rebound shot. And again, I cover the rebound shot in a previous video, which I'll link here as well. It goes 14, 18. Now again, jumping this way just allows an even easier draw. So instead, white is going to capture the offering of 14, 18. Now red plays the 1722. And white must jump. Now red is going to jump back, and I'm sure many of you can see the rebound shot happening. And now we have the double jump, which saves the game with the rebound shot. And this game was a draw. If you watch this video maybe once or multiple times and you're still failing to grasp a lot of these concepts and see some of these tactics, that's okay. Don't get discouraged. These were pretty complicated tactics and even master level players probably wouldn't be able to see them over the board necessarily. But what I do think is important is to study these practical problems and these concepts and I think going through them multiple times to at least see the general patterns that may come up when these formations are put in front of you. Thanks, as always, for watching.